Well, let's now bring in Mansour Shuman. He's a humanitarian worker and activist. He himself was in Gaza until March, but he joins us now here in our Doha studio. Mansour, thank you for being with us. When you hear about these huge shortages, these ongoing shortages of medical supplies and people being essentially trapped in the strip, needing urgent medical attention, I have to ask you, how did you get out? Are people who need to get out or wanting to leave, are they able to do that? Unfortunately, now, no, especially after the demolition of the Rafah border um, that connects Gaza to Egypt. Um, I was one of the lucky ones with an international passport who was able to leave uh, using that as a benefit. Um, when the Rafah border was there, people used to pay between five to seven thousand US dollars just to be allowed to leave uh, uh, Gaza. Right now, the Rafah border has been demolished. No one is allowed to leave, even if they have the money to do so. Yeah. The only people allowed are a few dozen every day that are given very special medical uh, uh, operations that need to be covered outside of Gaza Strip. And that can only happen after approval from the Egyptian and Israeli authorities. Let me ask you a little bit about your experience being in the Strip up until March. I mean, even then, we were hearing about famine setting in in pockets of the Strip at that point. What was your experience of, of moving around in the Strip and, and, and speaking to people? I remember moving with my family several times. Uh, our original home was in Gaza City beside a Shifa hospital. We moved from our house to a neighbor's home and then to a Shifa hospital and then to Khan Yunus, Rafah, Al Mawasi. So very similar to what a lot of people right now are suffering in Gaza. Yeah but still they are suffering right now even more because not only that they are moving constantly after being taught, for example, that al Mawasi was a safe area. Now it's not, as you can see in the news. Right now they are lying, for example, in Khan Yunus, the ruins of Khan Yunus, where there's a lack of food, water, medical supplies, and a lack of security. Um, my heart is with, with, my, with my family, with my friends, with 2.2 million Palestinians that have still remained inside of Gaza. I don't know where things are going. I don't know what we can do more. But definitely, we need to continue to speak up to allow this genocide to stop as soon as possible. We need to open borders. We need to have a no-fly zone in order to allow people to feel at least a little bit safe. And we need to allow for aid to come in. There are thousands of trucks lying in the south waiting to be entered. So this needs to happen as soon as possible. Manso, you were telling me that, that your wife's family are, are still on the strip, including some of them in the north in Gaza yes. City. What are you hearing from them right now? Unfortunately, the north of Gaza, including Gaza City, there's an ongoing famine right now. The only thing being allowed there is through the crossings of Zikim and Erez, a few flower trucks that come in every day. Other than that, people have no other kind of nutrition. Clean water is very scarce. They are eating right now the extracts of leaves from trees. That's how bad it is, just in order to get some nutrition into their bodies. There's also a lack of liquidity, a lack of cash in the area. People are suffering and they're not seeing an end to what's happening. And now there's a, there's a military escalation by the Israelis yeah. in the east side of Gaza City through al Shaja'iyah. So there's a lot of unknowns and a lot of unpredictability. And people are shouting for help, asking the international agencies to do something to put an end to this. Mansour, you yourself are from the occupied West Bank, right? Correct. I know you believe that the war isn't going on only in Gaza. Explain that to us. Yes, in addition to what's happening in Gaza, there are also atrocities happening in the West Bank. I think the whole world has learned of uh, the Israeli government's uh, approval that have been given by Simorich to build five more settlements in the West Bank. Uh, we believe that there's an ongoing apartheid happening in the West Bank with over 200 checkpoints separating different towns and cities that from between you know, the Arab and the Israeli uh, areas there. In addition to that, we are fearing that, similar to the possibility of exiling the people of Gaza from Gaza into Egypt, there might happen an exile of the people of the West Bank from the West Bank to Jordan. So people, my family there, are living in fear, especially those living in Jerusalem and in the West Bank, and they are, they are fearing the worst. I think there, is, there needs to be more media coverage on what's happening in the West Bank, in addition to what's happening in Gaza. 
Mansour Schumann, a humanitarian worker and activist who left Gaza in March. Thank you so much for sharing your experience and, and that of your family. And with us here on Al Jazeera, I really hope that, that they do manage to stay safe. Thank you.